assalamu alaikum this is sadri say network and we share my setup this is session 2 of networking 15 days boot camp at network x so session 2 is started now i am going to share the screen welcome all members and kindly come on time because it's hard to admit each one during the session so hope my screen is shared now you may response my screen is shared or not and my voice is clear or not so we can proceed further and welcome new members who joined for the first time today this is session 2 of networking bootcamp so it's shared and my voice is clear or not it's clear okay so let's proceed further so we have studied up to what is ccna now we will start studying from what is CCNP okay so what is CCNP CCNP stands for Cisco certified network professional CCNP stands for Cisco certified network professional it is certification from Cisco in which Cisco certifies you as a network administrator who have knowledge of networking on a professional or advanced level so let me explain this with the graphics look at this like yesterday i told you that ccna stands for what cisco certified network associate so ccmp stands for what cisco certified network professional okay so what i've told you that uh, CCM, if you pass ccnp exam so you will achieve certification from cisco in which cisco certifies you as a network administrator but of which level i have told you yesterday there are three levels is network administrator let me show you the study notes look at this as a network administrator cisco certifies you that you are the network administrator but of which level if you pass ccna exam then you would be network administrator of associate level but if you pass ccnp then you would be network administrator of professional level but if you pass cci exam then you would be network administrator on expert level but today we are talking about the ccnp so cc in ccnp you would be a network administrator certified by the cisco us based company of networking of which level professional level again i'm repeating ccnp stands for cisco certified network professional so what is cisco I am repeating again and again that Cisco, Cisco, Cisco. So there are a lot of members who don't know about the Cisco. What is Cisco? So Cisco is basically the name of the company of USA, United States of America. It is the top company in networking who creates or manufactures the networking products. So this is lecture two. Now let's start lecture number three. Why we need networking? Me allow this moment. Okay. Kindly mute your mic, please. Because there is the issue to other other members as well. So kindly mute your mic. So lecture three why we need networking the question is why we need networking you know i have differentiated to the difference between the network and networking yesterday that what is network and what is networking network means connectivity plus communication and networking means the process of creating the network so why do we need networking why what can we reason so can anyone answer here
in the chat box. I'm waiting for the answer. Yes, my answer. Yes, yes. And we need networking to share information and also resource. Good answer. Perfect. Can anyone else answer? Yes, to communicate. Muhammad Asif told us to communicate. Good answer. For communication, we need networking. Before, for example, except of networking, we want to communicate with another device. So it is not possible. Interconnect devices. Yes, devices can be connected through networking. Information and resource sharing. Yeah, resource can't be shared without networking. So this is the perfect answer from all of you. So let me explain this first. I'm tired that I'm accepting and admitting the requests who join again and again. So kindly don't left and join again and again. This creates the problems to another participant. Okay. So why we need networking? Through so networks, nodes are connected. So if they would not be connected, then they would be known as standalone devices, which cannot communicate with another device. So the answer is that why do we need networking? The answer is that nodes are connected in networking. If there's no networking between nodes, may not mean devices. So they will not be connected and they will not be as standalone devices. And you know that standalone device cannot communicate with another device. Okay, so that's why we need networking because without networking, the device would not be known as standalone device. And remember, standalone device cannot communicate with another device. So we need networking for communication with another device. Simple as that. Question is why we need networking. So answer is. Because without networking, any device would be known as standalone device. And and standalone device cannot communicate with another device. So the diagrams I've made prepared that uh, why we need networking. So let me repeat it again because. Why we need networking? Because without networking, any device would be known as standalone device. And a standalone device cannot communicate with another device. So that's why we need networking. Okay. Let me save this first. Let me allow the new members. Now look at this. What is not? There are few members who don't know about networking. Okay, so that's why I'm going to make them clear about what is not. But not is not a special or magic kind of word that you will not understand. Not just mean device. Not means device. This can be any device as well as intermediate device. Not can be and device as well as intermediate device. Remember this. Let me open the slides. Here it is. Let me search. Yes, here it is. <laughs> Look at this. In reality, people understand that computer science is a field, but IT is field inside computer science, like it is a part. And people also understand that networking virtualization, cloud computing, coding, etc. 
are part of IIT. But uh, this is true as well. But uh, some people view is different. Like, uh, let me tell you what some people think. Some people think that uh, computer science have two parts. Like uh, physics is another subject, math is another subject, chemistry is another subject, geography is another subject. So some people think that computer science have basically two parts. One is IT and one is coding. Look at this diagram. Some people understand in reality that computer science is a field and IT is field inside computer science and networking, virtualization, cloud computing, coding, etc. are part of IT. But some people view are different. Some people understand computer science have two parts, coding and IT, and both are different things. And you know, that some people say that uh, both are different things, but there is a big comparison between both as well. So what is comparison? Look at this. People say that coding is a field which is difficult for all of the new members who want to learn computer science because coding and IT is the part of the computer science. But information technology is the field which is easy, easy to learn. Like for example, this networking boot came, so every beginner can learn it easily because we start from the scratch. Like uh, we are teaching you what is not, what is standalone device. These are so basic terms. So IT is too much easy field and coding is difficult. So this is reality people view. Sell is starting low. Like for example, you learn coding and you go to the software house. So they will not hire you. Why? Because they will tell you that how much experience do you have. Okay. And they need expert expert coders, not the coders like uh, they will come for internship because they have big projects. And in IT, starting is high. Why? Because uh, if you haven't intern, uh, if you haven't job, then you can start with internship as well. They will guide you in the company. So IT is better than coding field. So in coding, you know that uh, there cannot in coding every man cannot run. Only extra brilliant people can do coding. And in IT, for example, if you uh, you, if you are a matriculation person, then you can start with IT as well. So IT is easy to understand and coding is difficult. This is the people view actually. So now look at this. This is the diagram which you should understand. And I want to explain this in deep and dive because if you will not understand this, so it means you, you are stuck. Like uh, you don't understand the IT field actually. So let me make you clear on this diagram. Look at this. IT mean information technology. It or some fields like, for example, networking, virtualization, cloud computing, containerization, etc., etc. For example, in this diagram, I mentioned four top technologies: containerization, cloud computing, virtualization, networking. So let me explain each one and let me tell you the roadmap, of the pathway on which, if you will go, then you can go further in the technology. For example, in networking, so look at this. In networking, if you want to go in networking technology, then the first step is network essential. For for example, this is the network essential training or 15 days free bootcamp. So this is the first step. Then the second step is start learning CCNA course. The third step is CCMP, professional level. The fourth is CCIE, expert level. And the fifth is SD-WAN, Software Defined YTT Network, okay, SD-WAN. And well, if you don't want to learn from the Cisco, you want to learn the courses, networking courses from Hawaii company, the China company, then you can start learning with HCIA, Huawei Certified Internet Associate, who are a certified internet professional who are a certified internet expert so you can do these courses of Huawei if you don't want to learn from Huawei as well then you can start with Juniper if you don't want to learn from Juniper then you can start with Microtech as well this was the networking roadmap now let's come to virtualization I will I would suggest that uh, if you haven't completed these courses for example minimum CCNA 
then don't come to virtualization cloud computing containerization at least you should complete CCNA training then you should come to virtualization cloud and containerization remember so look at this virtualization in virtualization there are three top companies go for the courses first is VMware second is Microsoft and third is Citrix and you know that Microsoft solutions are deployed by the Microsoft Azure the top second company cloud service provider in the cloud computing technology who provide public cloud services and the Citrix virtualization solution like Zentis, Zen Desktop and Zen Server is deployed by the AWS Amazon Web Services the top first company the top first cloud service provider of cloud computing providing public cloud services so VMware is the top company in the virtualization these are the four courses of VMware to learn virtualization technology so remember in virtualization there are four types of virtualization first is known as data center virtualization the second is storage virtualization the third is desktop virtualization and the fourth is network virtualization let me explain there are four types of virtualization in all over the world first is known as The first one is which one? Data center virtualization. Okay. The second one is which one? Storage virtualization. The third one is which one? Network virtualization. The fourth That's one stop. is which one? Desktop. Very, That's good. Stop. Very good. Very good. So desktop virtualization. So if you want to learn data center virtualization from VMware, then there is a course you should learn, which name is vSphere. But for example, if you don't want to learn data center virtualization, you want to learn storage virtualization, then you should learn the course of VMware, which is known as vSane. If you want to learn network virtualization, then there is a big course from VMware, which is known as NSXT. If you want to learn desktop virtualization from VMware, then there is a course known as what? VMware Horizon. Look at this. I've already explained you vSphere for data center virtualization, vSyn for storage virtualization, Horizon for desktop virtualization, and NSXT for network virtualization. Now look at this cloud computing and you know this uh, that uh, these are the courses from VMware for different virtualization solutions. From Microsoft there is Hyper-V, Hyper-V Manager, RDS and from Citrix there is Zen Server and Zen Desktop. Zen Desktop is basically the desktop virtualization solution like Horizon and Zen Server is the data center virtualization like vSphere and Hyper-V is the Microsoft solution of virtualization like vSphere which is used for data center virtualization and Hyper-V Manager is like vCenter Server in vSphere and RDS is the desktop virtualization of Microsoft like VMware desktop virtualization solution known as VMware Horizon so this is a virtualization technology now let's come to cloud computing technology in cloud computing you are I think expert in the names like AWS, Azure, GCP, IBM or Shell I think you all know about these kind of stuffs. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, which is the cloud service provider, public cloud service provider, manufactured by Amazon, the product of Amazon for cloud computing. The second cloud service provider is Azure, which is Microsoft cloud service provider. The third top cloud service provider is known as Google Cloud Platform. GCP stands for Google Cloud Platform, which is made by Google. And the fourth top company in cloud computing service provider, 
cloud service provider is known as IBM cloud which is the IBM cloud service provider the fifth top cloud service provider in all over the world is made by Oracle known as OCI Oracle cloud infrastructure the last technology there are a lot of technologies in IT but we have discussed just four top four the last is containerization which we will explain in this slide in containerization google product known as docker and google another product which is known as kubernetes i think you all have listened about kubernetes which is used for management of multiple docker engines and there is another solution of containerization as well which is known as podman which is uh, alternative of docker so these are some technologies in it but I will suggest that after this 15 Hydrogen Bootcamp, which is Network Essential Bootcamp, you should start your career in IT with networking CCNA course, which is three months course, average three months course. Okay. So this is finished now, but uh, let me show you something else. For example, IO hardware and on the top of hardware I install system software known as operating system and on the top of operating system I install what? Applications or services. So now look at this first hardware and on the top of hardware I will install what? operating system operating system on the top of operating system I will install applications for example I need four machine uh, for example I need two machines so what I will do I will buy two hardwares and on the top of two hardware, I will install operating system and then applications. So this solution is known as what? On premises. This solution is known as on premises. If you talk about virtualization, like I've discussed now, look at this virtualization. So in virtualization, you will buy just one hardware. On the top of hardware, you will install in type 1 hypervisor. And on the top of hypervisor, for example, you need two operating system. So you will create two virtual machines. And on the top of two virtual machines, you will install operating system. And on the top of operating system, you will install applications. Look at this, you will just buy one hardware for your private cloud solution. And you will install, for example, VMware Type 1 Hypervisor known as ESXi. And on the top of ESXi, you will create virtual machines. Okay. On the top of virtual machines, you will install what? Operating system. And on the top of operating system, you will install directly application or services. So this solution is known as what? Virtualization. It is also known as pri private cloud. Private cloud. So enlarge this okay so let me explain you cloud computing now now look at this 
for example we want to discuss about cloud computing okay so in cloud computing for example there this is the globe and in globe for example it is the country name is Pakistan and this is USA for example roughly for example this is Pakistan okay and this is USA so in cloud computing now understand for example in Pakistan there is a machine known as laptop which is also known as client PC client and device okay client which is used for accessing the services from the server so in USA there would be the same solution of virtualization private cloud in data center for example in Amazon data center which is also known as AWS cloud service provider so they will deploy this solution this private cloud virtualization and they will give you the access of virtual machine which you need for example you need Windows Server 2019 virtual machine so they will give you access of that virtual machine and you will pay for that and you will access the virtual machine through browser on your client PC from Pakistan so you remotely access those services from cloud service provider so this is known as what public cloud in cloud computing okay public cloud hope you all are clear now if you have any question you can ask then we'll proceed further I'm coming to chat box you can ask if you have any question because I don't want to confuse you I want you all to be clear which Hello. type of services are offered an example for example, in cloud no. computing, you need a virtual machine of Windows Server. Then you can request an AWS for the virtual machine on which on the top of the virtual machine, if the Windows Server is installed, then you can take the virtual machine and you will pay for that according to the model, which is known as PSU Go model. Why do we need cloud computing benefit? For example, on, in, in own premises, for example, you need four operating systems so you will buy four hardware in virtualization if you need four operating system then you will buy one hardware but in cloud computing you will not buy hardware you will not buy server hardware why because server hardware will be kept in different location and you will access that hardware remotely uh, for example in virtualization you buy hardware so remember you should also uh, keep the physical security of that hardware as well but uh, in cloud computing you should not be responsible for the physical security etc if that would be damaged physically so you would not be responsible and uh, could you kindly summarize all these three or two yeah, one very cloud computing is this too, na, even if the server goes off yes, it uh, directly directs onto another uh, server i mean the data backup if we if one is in mumbai and if uh, due to some physical uh, damage like uh, uh, electricity getting going off the, the server will directly reroute to pune data center and we can access it from there perfect answer this is the perfect answer now look at this let me admit this member and come to chat box and now look at this could you kindly summarize all these three virtualization on premises and cloud computing? On premises mean, for example, you need four operating system, four machines. So you will buy four hardware. Virtualization mean, for example, you need four operating system, four machines. So you will buy one hardware. And on the top of the hardware, you will install hypervisor. And on the top of hypervisor, you will create virtual machines, how much you need. And on the top of virtual machines, you can create operating system. And cloud computing means that you access virtual machine remotely through your client. I think it will also be great if you are recording and send it in the group. Do that we follow it again. Yes, you can discuss it with the admin. 
because I am just trainer in Nanotech X. I am not the manager, so that's why I cannot suggest anything or answer about this. Give examples of virtual machines, operating systems, and applications, and mention which are the best one to you to be used. Virtual machine is just like a physical machine, but uh, the difference is this physical machine can be tangible and virtual machine cannot be tangible. Virtual machine uh, networking is virtual networking and uh, physical machine networking is physical networking. Just the difference is physical and virtual. All the machines resources can be equal. For example, virtual machine can have also 4 GB RAM, 1 TB hard disk. So physical machine can also have 1 TB hard disk and 4 GB RAM. So both are similar but the difference is that this is virtual and this this is physical is it like uh, we purchase hosting of websites yes like for example you host a website so you host a website on the different server on the different location so this server is not uh, in your in your uh, environment that is kept somewhere else so this why that is the example of public cloud you host for example this the google drive so Google Drive, Dropbox, etc. are the example of public cloud because you store your data where on different location. So this, this is known as public cloud solution. Is more than one user can access same cloud machine simultaneously? No, because for example, you have bought one virtual machine for yourself. So obviously you will access that. No one can access because uh, uh, in cloud computing there is a large kind of security to manage your virtual machines, secure your, your virtual machines, and that virtual machine can be used by authenticated user only. And if you <coughs> authenticated user, then how someone else can access your virtual machine? So that's why no one can access your virtual machine without authentication process. There is authentication process in cloud computing as well. So now I think we should proceed further and look at this. I think this slide is clear to all of you. Now let's go forward this one look at this this is laptop and this is pc and they are connected through wide connectivity cable so this is also node and this is also node because i have told you that node means device which device device can be two of two types one is known as end device and one is another is known as intermediate device so device can be of two types again i'm repeating device Node is known as device. Device can be of two types, end device and intermediate device. Now look at this. They are connected through cable. Okay. But communication means that they can send data and receive data. Sending means uploading data. Receiving means downloading data. Like uh, for example, I upload the video on YouTube. So it means I am sending my data to YouTube server. It can be stored on your server remotely so youtube is what public cloud for me public cloud for me and the same mean downloading for example i download some video from youtube or facebook so facebook and youtube data are kept on the youtube and facebook servers remotely so when i receive the data from this server to my local pc local client or local laptop or local pc so that mean downloading downloading my data okay Let's move forward. For example, there is a mobile. I mean smartphone. There are two smartphones, mobiles. And the one person turn on the Wi-Fi or mobile data. And another person also turn on Wi-Fi or mobile data. So these are end devices and they can send and receive data through WhatsApp or Messenger or Facebook, whatever application they use for communication. But for example, in this device, Wi-Fi is off. And in this device Wi-Fi is off so these both devices cannot communicate with each other through WhatsApp or messenger etc so that's why these devices are known as standalone device because standalone device mean that device which is not part of network and cannot communicate with another device remember this I also told you here look at this what is not not means device that can be end device as well as intermediate device but standalone devices are not device. What does it mean by standalone device? Standalone devices are not, which is not connected to another node. Like it is a node which cannot be connected to another node. Why? Because I have already told you that why do we need networking? We need networking to communicate with another device. But if 
there is no networking, then divide will be strained on the device. Like network mean Wi-Fi, for example, Wi-Fi is a network, and uh, Wi-Fi is turn off and the both devices. Look at this Wi-Fi off, Wi-Fi off. So both are not connected with the network. So if we have a network, it means these are standalone devices, and standalone device can never communicate with another device. So that's why we need networking. Can you can you please repeat again about uh, what are the two types of devices? Can you go back to the slide? Yeah, sure. What is node? Node means device. That can be end device as well as intermediate device. Now clear? Okay, so uh, just question. The intermediate device, would that be like a router, like a switch maybe, a hub? Yeah, intermediate devices are router, switch, repeater, hub, MLS, multi-layer switcher, firewall. Got you, okay. Yeah, thank you so much. So we will understand about end device and intermediate device. It will come, look at this, these are coming. What is end device? Now we will study about this. We haven't closed the topic about discussing these. Let me take some questions from the chat box. Which operating systems and applications are safe to use? If you ask about the operating system, then I would prefer the Linux operating system because, for example, a hacker attack on the Linux operating system, then that is secure. Why? Because in Linux, if someone attack on the file, then just that file is damaged. Because these files are independent in Linux, the other file will not be damaged. But in Windows, if you attack on some kind of file, for example, you send some link to another one, then if you click, then you know all windows will be corrupted. So because the files and windows are dependent on each other, so I will say that the Linux is more secure in the comparison of windows. And can, can you repeat that again? I said that uh, in Linux, there is the file system XFS. You know that XFS file system, okay? So XFS file system is like this. For example, hacker attack on the Linux. So only that file is corrupted, not all files of Linux, because all file systems are independent of each other. You know the directories of Linux like boot directory, uh, user directory, USR directory, S boot directory, S bin directory, bin directory. There are main directories which are independent to each other, but in Windows, these directories are dependent to each other. So if you attack on the file, then all window is corrupted. But in Linux, if you attack on the file, then only that file is corrupted, not all Linux operating systems. So I will say that uh, obviously, Linux is better than the Windows. And another question Thank is, you. applications are safe to use. Which applications are safe to use? So the answer is, the applications are of two types. For example, I want to download Cisco Packet Tracer, like I've discussed, uh, I've discussed yesterday. So in Cisco Packet Tracer, if you want to download, let me show you here again. I also shown you yesterday, but for new members, I'm showing again, like how to download Cisco Packet Tracer. Right, Cisco Packet Tracer. 64 bit or 32 bit operating system. Write download and write what your operating system name. Now look at this. I'm going to show you this question answer practically. You said that which applications are safe to use. Now look at the answer. This is the website filehorse.com. This is the website netacate.com. This is the website computer networking nodes.com. And look at this. In 0 0.36 seconds, there are 384,000 results of this search. So it means that there are a lot of third-party software from which we can download this product. But this is the official website, netacate.com. If we download from this, then there will be no dangers uh, of our, to our file system. But if we download from third-party software, so the application will be same, but there can be a dangerous file in that package as well. So that's why I would prefer that uh, you said that which application is safe to use. So the application which is downloaded from the official website of the company that is best to use. And if you download from third party software, then I already explained there can be malware kind of stuff in that package. So that is not better safely to use. So the difference between HAS, SAS, IAS. Infrastructure as a service, software as a service. And uh, HAS, I don't know about this. What is HAS? And another one is PS, I think. Platform as a service. Infrastructure as a service. Platform as a service. 
and software as a service and another is network as a service as well which is a new one but the what is the h what does the h stands for i don't know about the hs but i know that uh, infrastructure is a service platform as a service software as a service and another is network as a service but the main three basics are infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service these are the different topics we will discuss about it literally because this is like floating glass not the cloud computing it relates with the cloud computing but it will take a lot of time and we will just less time to complete we will just 10 minutes to complete the session so that's why if there is a time then we will explain literally in the next session great explanation thank you so much omerana thanks for the detailed answer thank you so much tilam mohammad hardware is a service i think i don't know about this that hardware is a service this is just new term to me i haven't listened about it no i don't i don't think, i don't think there's a, i don't think there's such a thing as a hardware as a service because no, no, no. hardware there is no such service i think i haven't listened in my it experience yeah i think i think they hard, no no there there is no no hard okay so let's move forward okay question is what is an device if someone ask you what is an device you are telling us that no mean device device can be an device as well as intermediate device but what is an device then your answer will be those devices which are used for sending and receiving of data or message are known as and devices means for example there is a device like laptop so laptop can also send the data mean upload the data and receive the data mean download the data so laptop is what and device for example router a router is not and device why because router doesn't send data or receive data and just forward data okay it just forward data to another device it made me the summer guys welcome summer guys so let's move forward these devices are most common and popular and well known devices yes sure and devices real examples mobile like smartphones android ios iphone laptop macbook workstation server etc etc you know the one thing that uh, in interviews i have asked from many people that server is an device or intermediate device so many people i think more than 80% it persons answered me in the interview that uh, server is an intermediate device but this is totally wrong why because you know it a uh, server sends the services to the client provide the services to the client so it sends the services and also receive the request from the client so it also do this function like an device does that an device do what send and receive data so some do also like this so service and device not a terminal device so lecture 3 is finished now let's move towards lecture number 4 what are operating system of end devices if someone ask you that uh, can you tell me some names of a operating system about end devices so what would be your answer like uh, android and for iphone yeah, there is ios i don't know what is this kindly mute your mic there is sephora yeah yeah so make os for macbook linux for client operating system as well as server operating system linux is basically used as a server operating system as well as a client operating system and window so now look at this window is also a system but in window there is a problem you know what i was windows linux um you have windows you have ubuntu yeah you have yeah. um you have fedora which is part of linux yeah you know you have obviously um i didn't hear it linux the windows server the windows server which is it it's it is an os but it's different than your regular os because this one is made for um uh, you have chrome os yes chrome os as well and then obviously you got your mac os for macbook yeah yep now look at this diagram first is let me increase the font size and 
this is hardware for example and this is hardware and this is hardware and this is hardware. now look at this for example this is which hardware client hardware this is hardware which is client hardware and this is hardware which is server hardware and this is hardware which is server hardware so now understand what is difference between client hardware and server hardware remember the hardware in which there are least resources is known as client hardware for example 4 gb ram 8 gb ram 1 tb ram is 2 tb ram kindly mute kindly mute your mic because there is noise your hardware now look at this client hardware and server hardware what is the difference the client the, cli client the, the, the different I was going to say the difference is that your client hardware, it's, you know, um, this is a smaller scale compared to your server hardware. For example, in your client hardware, you would have like uh, one memory, whereas a, a server might have multiple hard, uh, like hard disks. And in your, in your client, you might just have one or two, depending on the size. You might have a 256, and then you ha might have a one terabyte. But on your server, you might have 10 hard drives or SSDs, one terabyte each, because you need to provide, you know, you need to ho host service services. That's why. Okay, good answer, perfect answer. Now look at this, in client hardware, there are too much less resources. And in server hardware, there are many resources. So simple as that. Now look at this, for example, we talk about window, which is GUI based, graphical user interface. So what, for client hardware, there is Windows, client OS. For client hardware, there is special designed operating system by Microsoft, known as what? Oh, here are some messages I want to read. But in case of proxy server, it can be intermediary. Yeah, yeah, sure. Please mute your mic right here. I think it's a message from for someone who oh, unmute your mic. Unmute his mic. Now look at this. So, for example, there is a client idea. So, window or Microsoft designed operating system, which is known as Windows Client. Windows Client mean like, for example, Windows 10. And Windows 11. Okay, but in Linux, remember, for example, there is operating system known as Red Hat Linux. Okay, which Linux? Red Hat Linux operating system. So, Windows client and there is Red Hat Linux operating system, not Red Hat client Linux operating system, just Red Hat Linux operating system. And now remember. On this Windows client, what you can do? You can install application. But remember, on Linux operating system, you can also install application. But if we come to server hardware, this was the story of what? The client hardware. Now we are going through the server hardware. So, Microsoft designed operating system for server hardware, which is not what Windows client, which is something that is known as Windows Server. So, Windows Server example are Windows Server 2019, for example, and Windows Server 2022, for example. So, on the top of this operating system, you can install what? install services and provide those services to client hardwares because they haven't resources and server hardware have too much resources for giving services to client operating system because they haven't too much services and resources now look at this in Linux for server hardware there is 
the same operating system not client and like in window look at this for client there is window client and for server there is window server but in linux for client and for server hardware for both there is same operating system known as red hat linux operating system or centos operating system or ubuntu kali whatever but there is same not like separate like window and you can install what services on the top of this this operating system now look at this again i am summarizing this for client hardware and server hardware there is different operating system of microsoft for client hardware there is window client like window 10 window 11 but for server hardware there is window server like window server 2019 and window server 2022 but for client hardware and for the server hardware there is same operating system of linux whatever this is red hat centos ubuntu kali whatever suci or scientific whatever you use for example i use red hat so there is red hat linux operating system for client as well and for server as well not like microsoft that different windows client for client hardware and different windows server for server hardware not like this just it's mean that linux operating system acts as what a server as well as client operating system but microsoft window client is used for client hardware and microsoft Windows server is used for server hardware remember this and on the server operating system you can install services and on the client operating systems you can install applications and through application you can access to services and access extra resources from server which is extra to server and server actually gives you services because client haven't many resources okay to run the applications to run the large applications surely they haven't resources so they need resources from server they will send requests and server will accept the request and to acknowledgement they will give them services in form of resources so let me show this if any question you can ask in chat box only okay only five minutes left to end the session okay let me complete this then we will give you answer of your questions you can ask in chat box up to that because we have just five minutes to finish now what is the operating system this is a simple term operating system but there are some few members who don't know what is networking and what is not what is operating system so let me explain for them okay what is OS? OS stands for operating system it is system software which takes resources from hardware directly in applications and services are running on operating system it operates the entire system let me make you clear through the diagram now look at this there are two types of softwares there are two types of softwares what is software what is hardware we will discuss about it later in because now we have this time that's why if you will discuss it so if you have basically two types one is known as one is known as system software and another one is known as application software so let me write this for our and another one is application software what is system software what is application software we will discuss about it deeply in next lectures as well but for now you should know the software have two types system software and application software but briefly let me describe this system software is used for to run the system software which is used to run the system application software which is used for specific application of user specific task of user again i am repeating the definition of application software software used for application or specific task of user 
a system software means software used for the system software used for the system like this system software example is for example windows 10 or linux why because linux and windows run the hardware run the system without these operating system system cannot run so that's why this is system software application software example is like uh, cisco packet as a gns3 which is used for specific task of user for example i need gns3 for my specific task which one to perform networking lab i need cisco packet as a forward to perform networking lab for example i have uh, idm app so why i need that to download some material so this why application software is for a specific task let me show this and the uh, session time is ended we are now going to cover the question answers question answer session starts now and remember that uh, we will study from this what is operating system i've uh, i've told about open system but not in deep we will talk about it deeply in next session on wednesday 14 december 2022 on 11 pm to 12 so now let's take the question and after this we will end the session if someone want to quit the session they can because i have finished the lecture now few use of server server basically gives the services to client can we for cloud server instead of physical server in organization yes because cloud service is better than physical server why because physical server means the solution of on premises and cloud server mean public cloud solution public cloud you are not responsible for the physical security of your server if it damaged in your on premises solution in organization if your physical server damaged then it costs a lot to buy a new one but in cloud it, if it damaged then you will not pay for that and the physical security is also the responsibility of the cloud service provider as well so cloud is surely better system software example is windows linux perfect answer um, Omer Rana said MCAC or Azure comes in same domain? No. Basically, MCAC, Microsoft System Administration course, like uh, in this course, you learn system administration. You learn about the end devices. You will be expert of end devices. You will be expert of servers. In this course, you will learn about um, Microsoft Windows operating system, like Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2022 about these so i think you should not learn mcsc kind of stuff you should learn linux in place of this because you know, in linux you also learn system administration like in mcsc but in mcsc you learn windows server and linux you learn linux server operating system so linux is better because uh, in nowadays in many organization linux is deployed on their top of on their hardware so that's why i would suggest that learn linux except of mcc and azure basically azure i have told you about azure that this is the top second cloud service provider by microsoft this is a cloud solution public cloud which course should start learn first sorry for out of topic no 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 problem you can ask because in question answer you can ask anything you want to and um, you want to question so which course should start learn first Okay, I would suggest that uh, you should start from CCNA. In mm. system administration, you, you should start from RHCSA course, I think. That is better in Linux. Uh, and another question is that application software used for specific purpose, yeah. It can be installed on system software, yeah, sure. When we will start exactly CCNA? CCNA Paid batch is started already before one week, and another batch will start will be started uh, in special classes. So after one week, I will start CCNA next batch. How it is possible to cover the CCNA in only 15 days on this speed? No, 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 no. How it is possible to cover the CCNA in only 15 days on this speed? No, 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 no. Actually, you are misunderstanding. This course is not about CCNA. 
this course name is Network Essential. Network Essential is something else. It is the basic of networking, like some basic topics of networking to teach you because you are new in networking, so that's why. CCNA is um, on the top of Network Essential. If you learn Network Essential, after this bootcamp, you will start CCNA. CCNA is the two or three months course. You can ask any question, then we will end the session, okay? Is there any difference between proxy software and hardware? Yes, there is a difference because proxy software is the virtual solution and proxy hardware is the physical solution. Oh, so let me give you assignment, all of you. The assignment should be submitted tomorrow before 11 p.m. So first section is theoretical. And the section second section is practical. Question is research on VPN and proxies and in practical In practical, you should install EV Next Generation Network Simulation Software on your Type 2 hypervisor known as VirtualBox of Oracle or VMware Workstation Pro or VMware Workstation Player of VMware. So let me show this assignment here. I will share this assignment document in group as well. I was thinking that you will teach CCNA. Basically, CCNA is a paid course, not a free course that we will teach you in the live session. One point is this. And another thing is that CCNA is not a basic course actually. Network Essential is basic course, like we are teaching Network Essential 15 days to you, in which we will cover some few topics. CCNA is something else in which we cover routing layers, switching layers, etc. So this is about something else. Network essentially means that we will cover you the basics of networking, theoretical section mostly, and sometime layers. So CCNA is the full course in which you learn routing and switching all layers, etc. Which is best hypervisor for sure VMware or VirtualBox? I will suggest VMware because uh, VirtualBox is the hypervisor which creates too much difficulties and hurdles for the students to pick the software. So that's why. But by the way, VirtualBox is also better. I will not say that VMware is only best. But in VirtualBox, you know, you know that uh, there is no need of key, etc. to activate. It is free to use. But in VMware Workstation Player, you can use it for free. But if you want to use VMware Workstation Pro, then that is paid. You should enter the key. But I have the keys I will provide. Thanks for your worthy time. May God bless you many more. Thank you so much. Inshallah, we will meet in next session. Allah Hafiz. Goodbye.